Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Welcome to Devlog 4. Hope you guys are doing well. It is Wednesday, January 15th, and uh, gonna start doing some a little bit more work. I um, Last time we covered setting up majority of the Jedi temples on the continents of Tython and establishing a little bit more of the main areas that our player or our character will be traveling to. Uh, just to revisit that, let me see here, let me pull up uh, Photoshop for you guys. Let that open up. Uh, so for for this specific devlog, what I want to go over are uh, just a few things. So one, I want to begin adding content that I would assume would be dynamic for the video game. Um, the and what I mean, what I mean by dynamic is that if you'll notice in Star Wars Kotor. Uh, both one and two, there were a few different dynamics, uh, things that had variables. And one of those things was a, as the character, so if you're it's Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, you are um, an influential person and you have the power to persuade people. And your choices, you know, somewhat affect your surroundings. Um, this is also reflected in KOTOR 2, and they take it a little bit of a step further where each uh, specific um, each specific companion that you had on the Ebon Hawk would have a, you could say, a trust meter. And, you know, if you did certain things that they would like... Um, like uh, Beodur, right? They called it influence, I believe. Beodur influence. Yeah, so Code Tour 2 had what's called an influence meter. And whenever you would do things, so let me, let me back up. These characters had specific um, personalities, right? They had things and ideals that they followed. And so if you did things that were in line with their ideals, it would either, uh, you know, it would gain influence that way. Or if you did things that were adverse to their ideals, you would lose influence with them. And so... I want to take that same approach with this to where you have a specific influence meter or a trust meter to where you know you could do certain things for your companions and it raises that trust level. And and then once you have a trust level high enough, there um, you know you can see right here even uh, the light side if you can just uh, look at the thumbnail rather than the actual preview it's trying to do the um, when you had an influence level high enough it would actually you know let's say for example if you were a light side Jedi you followed all the um, light side conversation points um, and you had high influence with your companions um, it would actually affect your companions so if you had a high light side they would have a high light say and vice versa if you had a high dark side, they would have a high dark side. So I want to take that same, same approach to to Journeyer. So we're going to have we're going to either call it a trust level or an influence level. Influence level makes sense. We'll do that. Okay, so I think that's uh, uh, one thing that, you know, it really adds uh, immersion to the game and to make it believable that you are in traveling, uh, you are in fact traveling 
with people and you have actual influence into their lives. Because once you actually, um, you know, on some of the characters, once you reach a high enough influence level, you can actually turn them into, into Jedi. So like Baodur, uh, Disciple, um, the Handmaiden, you know, they can become Jedi. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so that's that's one of the things I want to include into dynamic content. Another thing I want to include is what are called Force Storms. If you remember back a few devlogs, I believe I spoke about the the uh, the Force Storms that would happen on Tython. And I'm trying to see how I can word this correctly so you all will understand. Whenever Tython has an imbalance in the force, the planet itself will react with a force storm. It, it's basically like when your body receives an, it receives an allergen, your body will have an allergic reaction to that allergen. So it's kind of like the same principle. So like, let's say, for example, you are um, helping a specific village out, you know, you've helped these people. Um, you know, you, you've done good, you finished the quest, your, um, your light side level. Let's say it starts to swing towards, you know, towards one side or the other. Let's say it leans to the light side because you helped this, uh, you helped out this village. What would be interesting is to have the planet actually react to your choices. So whenever you begin to increase to one side or the other, it would create a specific weathering effect. So maybe, um, you know, maybe if you... You know, so now that I'm thinking about this, if we look back at the Jedi, they wanted to focus on having an, a, a complete balance between the light and the dark side. Basically, like gray Jedi, you have to have the good with the bad at the same time. And so they were a very, very much against leaning towards one side or the other. And so one way to do this would be to have no matter which side you begin to lean, you would have a force storm emerge from, on the planet or maybe in the area wherever it's located. So, you know, maybe a, um, you know, you help out this village, a uh, all of a sudden a uh, imbalance happens and a storm shows up very, very quickly. You have a uh, torrential downpour. You know, maybe you have strong, uh, strong winds. You have lightning. You know, you have all these different things in a like a, a thunderstorm. And then, what if there are actual pieces of the of uh, of the force? So, like. Like maybe like you encounter, you're actually like getting pushed around. Like if someone, like, you know, in video games, how you can force push your enemies. What if like the force storm actually had something that would like force push you like in a specific direction? And, it, and it's not really like a consistent thing, but it's just like a, a small reaction of the force storm reacting to the imbalance in the area. And so... Um, it'd just be like a spur of the moment thing, like force put, you know, you're walking through this village, torrential downpour, lightning, strong winds, and all of a sudden this force push is like, um, pushes you down the road, you fall on your face, and then you have to get back up in the game. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying could happen. So th that, that's one way to think about it. Now, the other way 
is that you could actually have the planet react to specific light side or dark side choices. So rather than it just having it be more um, consistent with the Jedi in their way of thinking that you needed to have a balance of the two, what if that the planet... So you know how your companions would look brighter in appearance if they had more light side points or they would look more scarred and aged and dark if they had more dark side points what if the planet was the same thing to where um you know you do something in a you know you save a village there's like this beautiful like set of rays that like come through clouds and it creates like things in the atmosphere that's more um more peaceful and then if you did something dark side and that's then that's when the actual storms would would come forth you know you would have like an earthquake or you'd have maybe some sort of volcano emerge i don't know um but that it could be really interesting to entertain, uh, one way the one way or the other. So we're just gonna put um, weather patterns. Um, let me see. I call these uh, force reactive weather weather patterns. So I think that could be pretty interesting to look into. I don't, I mean, as I said in one of the devlogs before, I think Just Cause 4 does like tornadoes and stuff and you have to, I don't know, I've never played Just Cause 4, but, uh, so I can't really speak to how it works in that video game, but it could be interesting to see how it could work with this to where your choices directly affect what the planet does. And it would be really cool to learn how to manipulate the planet itself to where the Jedi, they studied the planet, they stored all this knowledge, uh, possibly in the Temple of Kalith, for example. And you go to Kalith and you'll learn how to manipulate the planet. That could be really interesting. I'm glad I'm recording this because that's a, actually a pretty good idea. And you can manipula manipulate the weather maybe for a specific battle or, you know, you, could, you there's different things we can come up with that, but that could be really interesting. Uh, so there's that. Another piece of dynamic content is character creation. So up until now, um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and the Old Republic Knights of the Old Republic 2, um, as far as I know, you can only... What do I don't remember? It's been a year since I played it, but we'll play it on uh, further down the line once I get into um, sorry. Um, once we get further down the line, and I might get my computer built, we'll do an entire playthrough of both of those games so we can get familiar with the, with uh, those storylines, and then you know. Once the game is built, we can actually compare compare the two, see how they differ. It could be really interesting. Um, so, as I was saying, those two games only allowed human beings. They, they had different, you know, you could technically choose your character. You could choose your character's face. Um, but other than that, you weren't allowed to actually change your species. Um, so my idea is to actually allow, in this video game, allow you to choose, um, you know, you have a specific set of species, so, um, character, and I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say species, because that makes them sound more like animals, maybe character, race, um, customization. Um, 
and, and this actually goes a little bit more in depth. So uh, my idea is to start off the game on the planet of, I wrote this down, Calamar. So Calamar, I don't know if I've spoken about this with you guys, but Calamar is a planet within Tython, and that's where I want this story to, to begin. So Calamar is a planet, it's called the Jewel of the Jewel of Tythos, I believe. Uh, Tython system. Let me go to it. I believe I have shown you guys So Calamar is right here, has a few moons. So beyond Tython, they settled first on Calamar, a jewel of the Tython system. Then Chicago, the out outlaw world. Then on the forest planet, Skagora. And on the moons of the giants, Aubrey and Barr. And even the outermost planet, Cold Fury's Gate. So, the planet of Calamar, cosmo uh, cosmopolitan planet. Let's see. So essentially what happened is, you had all these pilgrims on the Thoyor, right? They come to Tython, they spread out across the planet, they all begin having kids. Well, some of those kids aren't Force-sensitive. So, as the planet would experience Force storms from these Jedi, who were Force-sensitive, uh, and their um, imbalances in the Force would create more Force storms, it became dangerous for the non-sensitive, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the non-sensitive settlers who lived on Tython. So, basically some of the descendants of these Jedi. What ended up happening was the settlers moved from Tython and populated the rest of the solar system. And so Calamar was one of the first planets that nonsense, these non-force sensitive settlers came to. So uh, Calamar had become a business and religious center of the system, boasting a high density, well integrated population and cities built out of white metal along with tall spires. Calamar was referred to as the Jewel of Tython system by that time. So, Calamar appeared to be green in color. The planet featured an atmosphere with white colored clouds and also had at least one mountainous region on its surface. Several cities that were considered to be beautiful were built on Calamar out of white metal with tall spires gracing the cities. At least four such spiders stood on a green colored foothill of the mountains of Calamar's surface. So I believe this is what someone has kind of imagined Calamar to look like. You have this metal, these metal spires, um, and I'm assuming these are actually like huge facilities where people live. But contain at least one body of water. Um, Calamar militia responsible for keeping order, commanded by captains. A lower rank was constable. Captain Loris would remark that he had been a constable and still in training during an incident when it, with Jedi Ranger Volk. Royan was a city a major tourist attraction built on archipelago in the southern ocean. Archipelago. Okay, so, um, so my, so this story, what I would like to do is have the story begin on this planet and your character your character's background, this would be the home. This would be where they live. So the specific uh, specific area, uh, Roll Yawn, 
and it actually has an article, a city and a spaceport. There were five large islands and countless smaller ones, all of them developed. And hundreds of bridges, both large and small, span the spaces between land masses. Gleaming white spires reach stark fingers to the sky, and several classes of cloud chaser airships drifted between them. Lower down, buildings and streets clung to the islands, and sometimes protruded out over the ocean on slender stilts, and beautifully wrought bridges stood in isolation over the waterways. Ships dotted the ocean, and the inner waterways were busy with smaller watercraft. The white metal spires pulsed here, and there were color lights illuminated even during daytime to identify an island, a building, or a street. It was, it was an attractive city, and most of its money came from tourism. People traveled from all over to Calamar to holiday on Roll Yawn, and with tourists came the vultures and parasites who preyed on them. So, um, the character's background story would begin on Roll Yawn. I think that's a good uh, good idea. They've given us a, a lot of great description that we can actually build a map off of. So I'm, I'm going to include um, Roll Yawn on here. And um, so our character would be one of the inhabitants of Roll Yawn. The um, its background story would be from Roll Yawn. And so moving forward to my idea about how you can choose your different character race. So we, we know for certain that many different kinds of pilgrims came on these though you're right. So you have the Daibindu monks, you had Selkath, Wookiees, Sith, Pure Blood, Staff, Mary, Twi'leks, Humans. Iktachi, Cathar, Zebrak, you know, all these different ones. It would be interesting to, for example, have a cantina, right? So let's say um, Corazon. Let's just try to get some visuals. Corazon Cantina. Looks like the Old Republic has one. So hopefully there's some images that show up. Um, let's check it out here. I've actually never seen this cantina. Okay. Um, that looks more like a dance, a dance floor. It looks like a club. Um, I'm looking more for something with actual booths cut out, so maybe something more like that, or community cantina. Okay, it's maybe something Oga's cantina. Let's, okay, so yeah, so something like this Ogus Cantina. That was this was from Star Wars Episode Two, right? Ogus Cantina. Let's see if I can find a, a large image for you guys to not squint at. Oh, so this is actually something built by Disneyland. Uh, we'll open up this image in a new tab. Okay, I'll, I'll zoom in here for you guys. Okay, so essentially what I would like to do is have, you guys know for a fact, I, I want to use Satil Sean within the game. She is going to be an influence. She's basically, uh, basically going to be, you know, more or less like your your master in the game. She teaches you stuff. So what I would like for her to do is come to Roll Yawn. You don't know why she's there, and she is searching for someone to take her to Tython. 
So what if the moment that you get to choose your character is when Satila walks into a cantina and you have different race uh, races of people in, in like different booths. So over here you would have two humans. So you'd have a male or a female uh, human. And over here you'd have a um, male or female say brack you know you, you could go around the entire room so you could like diagonally select like cycle through them and determine what species you wanted to be so that could be really interesting that would be the first thing um i do know on uh star wars the old republic um a race races right i think you can choose different races on the old republic So 12 playable, playable species in Star Wars. So Cathar, Chiss, Cyborg, Human, Miraluka, Mirialin. Am I saying that right? All right, I'm not going to try to pronounce the others. Um, but it would basically be a, a more immersive way of choosing your character rather than, you know, just starting off in the menu and saying, you know, I choose um, this person. Um, so you could actually, um, kind of allow it to be more immersive where, you know, maybe you're in the viewpoint of Satil Sean and she's walking from booth to booth and, you know, eyeballing each specific race and the genders of each races. And so, you know, maybe we do have like 10 or so, 10 different races or 12 different races that are, uh, hanging out in the booths. Um, and then, uh, once you choose a race, the, uh, once you choose our, I'm sorry, once you choose a race and a gender, the other gender who was accompanying you at the table actually ends up leaving and, um, Satil and possibly whatever companion is with her, if it's, um, um, maybe... Uh, let's see, CEO Bacarn, possibly. I still need to work on this uh, main party, but, um, well, maybe she, like, just for the sake of discussion, let's just say she's with somebody. So once you choose your specific race and gender, Satil and her companion sit down at the booth, and they start, like, asking, like, who you are. And so then that's when you type in your name. And and then um, uh, maybe it gets to the point where, like, you know, maybe you have, like, a hood on or something. Or, like, the... Um, uh, maybe, like, it's really dimly lit. Um, and so, like, maybe back here... Um, you know, your character's first leaning back and Satil is like, show me your face. And so then you lean forward and, uh, you know, you begin to like, uh, that, that's when you can like customize the face and stuff and what you look like. Um, and then, you know, does the discussion goes further and, um, you know, maybe further down the line, you guys end up standing up and then you can like adjust like the height and the build um, my LinkedIn says George Lucas invited you to connect on LinkedIn. <laughs> is George Lucas trying to hunt me down? I don't know if this is good or not. <laughs> Let me see if I can show you guys. Can you guys see that? Sorry, I'm trying to show you. George Lucas invited you to connect. <laughs> Be really funny. Anyway, um, so that's just kind of like what could happen. And then, you know, so you have your, um, you know, you have your name picked out. You have, um, you know, you have your build set up. You have your face designed. 
and then maybe once uh, so you you start to talk to Satil more she ends up leaving but at the end she's like you know I need someone to go with me to Tython um, and I'm still kind of working out how she actually gets you to Tython but um, needless to say I think what happens or what should happen is the character you end up walking to your home if it's like some sort of huge apartment or whatever um, and like a tall building on one of these islands um, it would be interesting to actually take control of the character and walk home to your apartment you know across these bridges that we just described um, you know seeing these spires like this is obviously at nighttime so you can see like these spires and the lights on the spires like blinking and stuff so you go home and you kind of like begin learning more about your character and your background and maybe um, there are specific weapons um, that um, you know you've had in your you know you've had in your apartment that you can be kind of kind of learning more about and um you know maybe so somehow at that point you can <clears throat> excuse me you can let me think somehow at that point you can begin like customizing you know um you know your constitution so like on the um on the first code tour and then code tour two, you could pick your constitution, your strength, your awareness, your persuasion, all this stuff at the beginning of the game. So what if it's something like that? Like, you know, maybe you're um, reading a book and you're setting these specific statistics, um, or maybe maybe your, your character likes to journal. He journals about his journey. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, that was really cheesy. Um, <laughs> he journals about his journey. Um, so what if your character is journaling about his life and he talks about, you know, you know, I don't sleep well. And so like, or, you know, your constitution. So it'd be like your, your life, your life points, right? So, you would be, you know, I don't know. Uh, we can think more about that stuff later. But, like, you determine all of your um, personality statistics right then. And then, maybe after that, um, you somehow end up on Satil Sean's uh, spaceship. And you begin... Or Starship, excuse me. Is, this, is it Starship if it's Star Wars, right? Um, Starship. Um, Star Wars, right? Is that what is that what they call like ships in Star Wars? It's Starship. Okay, yeah. So it's Starship. Cool. So um, maybe what happens is you. You know, you end up getting on the starship, and you know somehow she's like, "Hey, I've got a specific room for you. I got a bunk. You can, you know, throw your bag in here and get some sleep. And you know, maybe you access like a computer terminal, and then that's when like you can decide like your other skills. So like your computer use, your security. Um, what else is there like?" Uh, like minds, mind sweeping. Like I think that's part of awareness, right? Uh, no demolition. That's what it was. So you have demolition. You have um, ranged weapons. Yeah, I think persuasion was one of them. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, we that, you could do that at some point, and then. Um, And then you finally arrive on Tython with Satil Sean. And so, a, a part of this, um, 
dynamic character race customization aspect I want to include is that um, your your father. So what I would like to do is actually include the player's father into the video game. Um, you know, the character's father raised them on Calamar, and the player's father was active in going to Tython for jobs. Um, what would be interesting is if the ty if uh, the character's father uh, secretly became studying the Force and um, ends up getting stuck on Tython and falls prey to going to the dark side in it on on Tython. And so because he's your father, what would be interesting is that no matter which species that you pick within the cantina, it, your father would also be the same species. So if you pick a Zabrak within the cantina, your 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 father in the game would also be Zabrak. And when you confront him, he's, he looks different. He's designed a specific way. Um, but that could be really interesting. So, yeah, dynamic according to the species of the player. Um, so that could be pretty interesting. I I don't think I've seen... Maybe I'm just unaware, but I'm not sure if I've seen a video game do that. Um, so that's kind of... Uh, I've been thinking about that over the last few days, um, trying to determine what dynamic content to have. Obviously, you're going to have different, um, like a faction status. So obviously, you're traveling to different continents on Tython, and you're going to have influence, whether good or bad, with the specific. Um, natives or populaces on these continents and your actions good or bad will have effects and they'll have certain points of view about you so your faction status will be dynamic um, so that's that's another thing um, so I think it's good for now so one of the first things I want to target and design are, um, let me highlight this. We're going to target this, and we're going to target Masara. So what I want to do is have Masara be the first planet. I'm sorry, not the first planet, the first continent that you land on. I think what should happen to the story is that you're on Satil Shan's ship, you are flying into the atmosphere because of you, um, no one is aware of the type of planet that you're on, the fact that Tython reacts to imbalances in the Force. Majority of the people on your ship are going to be light side users and so it's going to create imbalance in the area just having them there. Um, you're introducing new um, imbalances to the planet. So I think what should happen is as the ship is entering the atmosphere, the ship is um, actually uh, taking damage from a force storm and ends up having to land on Masara. And then from there, that's where you kind of start off and begin learning about Tython. And you begin learning about the temples. Um, and so those are, those are that's what I would like to target first. I think we also need to design... Teal Sean's Starship. We have to give it a, a great name. Um, 
Let's go to Star Wars. Starship. Name generator. Perfect. <laughs> What's funny is like we in in main Star Wars storylines we've had the Millennium Falcon and we've had the Ebon Hawk. So I mean, do we land on another bird? I think that'd be kind of funny. What if it was like a spicy dove or <laughs> get names? fit for spaceships. Requiem. That's pretty good. We've already heard of Harbinger. Hmm. So it'd be interesting to if this is Teal Sean's ship, it'd be interesting to look into her history and maybe she acquired this ship after a specific event and named it based on that event. Let's look at Satil Sean real quickly. Satil Sean. Can't wait to start doing a playthrough of the Old Republic so I can start learning more about Satil Sean within the game. I, I tried getting into the Old Republic about almost four years ago. No, uh, maybe three years ago. And I was trying to play on my MacBook Pro, and I was using Play with Mac, which is a kind of like an emulator, but it uses Wine. So it's like kind of, it's not high quality. And nonetheless, the Old Republic does not have a client for a Mac. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to mess with. I ended up deleting it and just not continuing. I probably completed a few quests, but that was about it. I didn't get very far. Um, let's see here. She was pregnant with Malcolm's child. And Sean eventually gave birth to her son, Theron, in secret with the help of Master Zoe, before giving the child up to the Jedi Order and returning to the battlefield. So what if... So what if it has to do with... Um, the word has to do with, or the phrase has to do with either her relationship with Malcolm or with the kid that she had to give up. That could be interesting. And then so like when you, uh, you know, at some point in the story, you start asking more about um, you know, you start asking more about Satil Sean's history and she ends up giving up that information about how she had to give away her child. Uh, I'm just going to do some dictionary searches. Uh, a reaver. Sound like a reaper. What's a reaver? Hmm. 
Um, let me go to, I really didn't want to ex exit out of the dictionary. Let's go to um, the thesaurus. And we're going to type in regret. Hmm. Let's see here. Penitence. Bad conscience of a responsibility. I'll make sure, like it, the action of feeling or showing sorrow and regret for having done wrong. What if you come to a certain point within the game and she actually admits that she should have never given up her child? And I also like wa how wonder how easy it, it'll say, or I'm sorry, I wonder how easy it will be to say within the game. Like how awkward is it gonna be? Hurry, we need to get to the penitence. Um, let's go to Star Wars starship names. We'll do famous starship names. Ghost, Moldy Crow, Kyle Katarn. Surely there are other. Hmm. Alright, we'll just check this one out. Maybe we can get some inspiration for what Satil Sean's. So the X-Wing, TIE Fighter, Millennium Falcon, Super Star Destroyer, Y wing, B wing. That is a pretty dope ship. The slave one, the ghost, Jedi starfighter. The Ebon Hall. Fireball, <laughs> Clawcraft, looks like a frog. I 
I like how it has relation to the Millennium Falcon. You can tell it's Karelian. Shadows of the Empire was a good, good a really good game. Sun Crusher. That was the Harbinger, I believe. The Ravager. All right, maybe we can find a different link here and find something close to that. The penitence. I need something like that. The penance. <laughs> Shrift? What is that? Huh. Shrift? Confession? Especially to a priest. That could be interesting. Shrift. So we have Millennium Falcon, Ebon Hawk. What about Shrift Owl? <laughs> I bet it doesn't have to be an animal. Um, I don't know. Shrift would just I may have to just think on it. Uh, so I do like the the idea of I like the idea of shrift because of the definition it has is confession, or specifically that to a priest. So what if Satil Sean buys this ship after she buys the ship after she gives up her, her child and calls it the shrift because she one day vows to confess what she did. And then so sometime during the game, she ends up confessing to you what she did. And what if she ends up like renaming it? Like that, that could be kind of cool. But, um, the shrift. Let's see if there's... The absolution, attrition. What's a shrifter? Is, is can I use the word shrifter? The shrifter. Uh, 
Is that a word? It thinks I mistyped shift or a shifter. Huh. Or we could call it the remorse. Oh, so what about this? Okay, so what if the ship is called the remorse? about that um, so what if the ship is called the remorse the fact that she gave up her child those many years ago she had all this pent up negative energy what if she like was actually internally towards the dark side so the fact that when she, in the ship, enter the atmosphere, the remorse. That's what causes the force storm on Tython and causes the ship to actually crash. And you learn about that. That could be interesting. I like it. I like the remorse. Um, so we're going to do that, the remorse. And then what happens, like, you know, further down the line, she's like, oh, thank you so much for helping me confess. I don't feel so bad now. Um, the pardoned. The freed. Uh, let's check out Freed. So what if we call it the Liberator after that? <laughs> that works. I like it. Thereafter, the Liberator. I like that. That could be pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. So uh, we're going to stop the video here. And um, I think next time what we'll do is we'll actually begin kind of... Um, Maybe, maybe figuring out more of the backstory of the character and the player's father. And then, if we have enough time, start working on Masara and maybe creating different things we could do on Masara and how you start off. Uh, maybe start designing it actually with a little bit of uh, just like some triangles to show like this is where mountains are, these are where plains are, maybe this is a lake, etc. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and uh, I will see you guys next time.